Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Warm welcome to today's webinar on how to successfully publish your research in high-quality journals. This session will explore publishing your research paper and how you can create your space within good quality journals such as the International Journal for Quality in Healthcare. The following questions will be addressed during this session. What do the editors or the editorial team usually prefer? What would help to enhance your chances to get your paper published in these journals? So there are no better people to present this session, of course, uh, to our participants than Professor Dr. Yuchan Jack Lee, who is the Editor-in-Chief International for the International Journal for Quality in Healthcare, as well as the Professor and Dean for College of Medical Science and Technology in Taipei Medical University, Taiwan, as well as Director of International Center for Health Information Technology, also in Taipei Medical University, Taiwan. And on top of this, Professor Jack Lee is an Editor-in-Chief uh, computer Masters and Program in Biomedicine and Associate Editor Journal Clinical Oncology, Clinical Cancer Informatics. Uh, Professor Jack Lee will be co-presenting this uh, session today with Dr. Usman Iqbal, who is the Assistant Professor for Global Health and Development Department in College of Public Health in Taipei Medical University. He is also the Project Manager and the Researcher for the International Center for Health Information Technology in Taipei Medical University, as well as the Managing Editor international, for International Journal um, for Quality in Healthcare. Um, Dr. Usman Iqbal is also the Asia-Pacific Associate Editor for the Computer Masters and Program in Biomedicine. Well, without further ado, I would like to hand it over to um, Professor Jack Lee. Just a couple of things before we start. Uh, the, pro uh, the presentation today will take 45 minutes approximately and we will leave all of the questions today um, until the end. We will break uh, through around 20, 25 minutes mark to take any burning questions. So if you do have the questions that will come up, straight, uh, do please put them in chat or uh, question box provided or raise your hand. Just to uh, bear in mind that if you do raise your hand, your mic will be unmuted and you will be in position to ask your question live. Now, um, over to you, Jack Lee. Thank you, Juliana. Um, and again, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm your uh, host, Yu Chuan Jack Lee. Uh, so, I'm going through today's outline where we'll talk a little bit about uh, journal mission. And actually, we'll be focusing mostly on International Journal of Healthcare. Uh, quality, quality in healthcare, um, and so after this seminar, I expect that you will become more familiar with how we evaluate papers and how we accept them, and hopefully that's going to help your endeavor uh, into submissions to IJQSC as well as other journals. Okay, so uh, let's start with the, the introduction. The uh, International Journal for Quality in Healthcare, it's an official journal of ISQA, uh, and I'm sure all of you know what ISQA is, okay? Um, it has an impact factor, this journal has an impact factor of 2.5, um, and this is a little bit about myself. I think uh, you and I actually talked through all of this uh, list already. Um, we. In addition to the editor-in-chief, we also have a group of this very prestigious deputy editors for the, the uh, uh, ISCO journal, including Anthony from Switzerland, Esquil from Argentina, Rosa from Spain, David from Australia, Oliver from UK, and Wen Chen from China. Um, and in addition to the English version, uh, and the English content that we generally publish in the IJQSC, we also have a group of special project editors or translators that they actually help us translate the abstracts of all of each issue into different languages. Um, they will be, uh, these special project editors will be Rosa from for Spanish translation and Polo for Portuguese translation and Wen Shen for, for Chinese uh, translation 
Yuichi for Japanese translation and Sean for French translation. So you will be able to actually get all the translated abstract free uh, online on our website. So um, our mission, of course, is to uh, identify the best quality work. And uh, it's important that you report with very clear um, objective. So the area of the journal, as you would expect, it's an interdisciplinary approach, but it focuses on health services research, health care evaluation, health policy, health economy, quality improvement management, um, and clinical research that's focused on the quality and, and safety of, of care. Um, so we also welcome systematic reviews as well as other meta-analysis paper that uh, pertain to the area of quality and safety of healthcare. Um, so these are the, uh, in quality of care, we focus on improvement, organization and management, measurement, methods, safety, um, and also government and private sector policy that will be affecting qualities. Uh, also international comparison will be an uh, interesting topic. The, uh, the types of articles, we have several different types, including the most general, uh, the most common types will be research article that you provide a report of original research um, pertain to the topic. And uh, so if you first, if, if this is your first time or, or first few times that you want to submit original research, you might want to uh, read an editorial about how to write a research article. Also review article, as I just mentioned, we welcome systematic reviews. Um, evidence-based medicine approach, quantitative or narrative of issues related to quality of care. And we also welcome methods article, uh, that's that's didactic articles about specific methods that can actually improve quality of care. Uh, and also, we also have more specialized types of articles uh, that's called quality in practice, meaning um, it's a paper that describes case studies of a specific topic that's of general interest. And also uh, perspective on quality. This is more about reflective articles about quality in healthcare. Um, editorials, this is typically from the editors. And letters to editors, uh, that will be, uh, you know, that, will, that can be all kinds of article, but, but specifically we would like to uh, have letters addressing matters raised by papers that's already published in recent issues of the journal. Um, the uh, submission in the last three years to IJQSC uh, has significantly increased from 489 to 691 in, in uh, 2016. Uh, and this year, in the first five months, we have already received 312 manuscripts. And this is a uh, manuscript decision statistics in the past uh, 17 months, right? Uh, so as you can see, we do uh, accept and as well as uh, reject a quite amount of papers. Um, so in this page, you can see the highest number of submission came from Australia, uh, but, um, well, and we accepted 18 out of the 74 um, submissions. Uh, and China is a little bit low on the, uh, the successful rate. And we also have uh, one submission from Afghanistan, and it's, uh, it was accepted, and one ex Submission from Argentina, and so it was accepted. So um, these these are other countries that that has been submitted to papers to the journal, and the number of acceptance and accept and, and the ratio. I'm not going through all of them, but you probably have some other chance to look at them if you want. Uh, come back to them. Um, as you can see, we would like to encourage submissions from all countries, especially 
low and middle middle low and middle country income country because uh, relatively low and middle income country publish less papers compared to other area. Uh, okay. So so the general acceptance rate is about eighteen percent. Uh, so in the this is the total, the general statistics for the past seven month uh, was that six, 924 papers were submitted and 167 accepted. Uh, so it will be uh, quite, uh, it's actually a quite high uh, rejection rate. Uh, but again, uh, we want to ensure that all the papers that's been accepted are of very high quality. Uh, well, there is a difference in terms of open access charge. Generally, it's free to submit to IJQSC, but if you want to, and, and if you if you want to make your paper open access at the time of the publication, um, then there's an additional fee. The fee is actually reduced to the developing country, and uh, there are also some free developing country charge. Um, so you, you can visit our journal website for a list of qualifying countries. Okay, but the idea is to to encourage low and middle income country um, to submit more papers. Also, if your paper was selected as a editor's choice paper, then it will become open access upon publication without any charge. Okay, so the the general problem that we see from low and middle income country are um, as follows: uh, paper format, and sometimes we get uh, irrelevant content, and the the robustness of the methodology should be uh, uh, good, and also it will be great to offer a bit of international comparison. Uh, so, due to this, uh, due to the uh, these some of these problems that actually affected the acceptance rate of this paper submitted from low and middle income countries. So, we hope that you could look at the 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 um, for the authors the information for the authors before you actually submit your manuscript. So, to make sure that your format is correct and have some English proofreading, so you make sure that the language is appropriate, um, and you look at your content and the methods to make sure that they are robust. Uh, that would actually increase uh, significantly the chance of being accepted. Um, and of course, as any other quality journal, our editors are looking for important issue, timely and important issue uh, with novelty, and we expect that the numbers and and the models that's presented in a paper are scientifically accurate and hopefully the topic can attract broad interest and of course above all all the methods and the experiments are ethical so the the journal has a specific process of how to process a submission so upon submission, we will look at whether the basic requirement is met. If if not, it will be uh, rejected right away in a very few in very few days. If the form is correct, then we will assign reviewers um, to start the review. Usually, this is the the step that takes uh, the longest amount of time because we can have reviewers that decline, or we can have reviewer that that decided to review it, but takes a long time and then end up not reviewing it. Uh, so sometimes we have to go from reviewer to reviewers for quite a long time. And this could take anywhere from several weeks to several months. And so uh, that's, it depends on the topic. If the topic, if there are more expertise in the, in the area of, of, of the topic of interest, then it's easier to get qualified reviewers to review your article. But if, if the topic is more specialized or in a, a uh, special area, we might sometimes 
um, it might sometimes take a long time to get qualified reviewers to complete the reviews. So um, the peer review process is that the review is double blind. So the reviewers would not know who published, who wrote the manuscript, and who are the teams of the researchers in order to get the, an unbiased view of the paper. So the credit are all based on the, the paper and the research itself. The author will also would not know who the reviewers are unless the reviewer choose to reveal their own identity. Um, and the editors would reevaluate based upon reviewers' comment for its originality, scientific value, readership, audience interest, and content structure. So um, the reviewers provide comments and recommendation for the paper to get accepted rejected or revision, um, but the editor will, go, is, uh, will make the final decision. And the, uh, the editors will look at the reviewer's comments. Uh, a typical, I mean, a typical inappropriate review would be like uh, a reviewer accept a paper without any comments, or a reviewer reject the paper without any comments. Uh, then these are unqualified reviews and we generally uh, omit or ignore these type of reviews and we will find new reviewers to, to perform a, a better quality review. And reviewers, I mean it's common that reviewers have contradictory comments. It's not like, um, you know, all the reviewers are consistent with each other. So uh, it's common to have contradictory comments and that that's when the editor will come in and look at the comments. And sometimes we could go also go back to the reviewers and ask them why why they think so and what are the uh, um, evidence that, that leads them to do to provide such a comment. Reviewers also serve um, as a consultant uh, in decision making, but but again, uh, we we thank our reviewers for taking their time and, and provide good comments. Uh, Okay, but the final decision are made by the editors though. So again, this peer review process as, as in most of the journals, sometimes can be quite slow and sometimes we can have conflicting views. Uh, sometimes we can have some, of course we have bias against a specific theory. Um, and all the reviews, although we strive to have objective reviews, but Again, reviewers may may sometimes be personal uh, and not completely objective. And also, uh, the uh, the thing that we're trying to prevent is data manipulation, invention, and and, and fraud uh, in in the review. Um, we do have, I mean, we do heard about other journal that that have recommended reviewers actually sent to themselves, uh, the author team, and we want to prevent that kind of fraud. Um, so you can recommend your reviewers and we actually encourage all the authors when you submit a paper, please also submit a list of reviewers that you would like to recommend. But make sure that they are experts in your field and, um, and make sure that uh, they are qualified reviewers. And we, we would prefer that the reviewers are not from the same institution, the recommended re reviewers are not from the same institution or same country of those from the authors. Um, so, uh, right. So we would, uh, again, this, th these are the things that we should be uh, careful about, okay? Um, Okay, the author's package is when you when your paper get accepted, we will send you um, a author's package, and we will, and if you're selected as the editor's choice, you will get open access uh, right granted to your paper right away for free open access, and also we will ask you to provide a layman's summary, meaning not your abstract, but something that a general population, a general 
people could understand uh, a little bit like the news piece uh, from from the authors that we will publish in its class bulletin, which reached to thousands of people. Um, and also the uh, okay, the editor's choice paper will be promoted through OUP, which stands for Oxford University Press, uh, which is the publisher of this journal. They will promote through their social media platform. And, and we will, as I just described, we will translate your paper's abstract into five different languages, including Chinese, Japanese, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. So these are the author's package, and this is uh, a, a snapshot of the uh, layman's summary, and also uh, the uh, Facebook uh, of the OUP, right? And Twitter, <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. So we would actually promote it, all the editor's choice article through our social media platforms, um, and these are also these are also examples of the uh, papers that we promoted through our uh, social media platforms. Okay, and we also provide a layman summary that's been sent through the uh, ISQAS uh, bulletin. Okay, so this this is a sample of uh, the translated abstracts: uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, uh, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese, also Japanese as well as French. Um, so this shows you a quick uh, look at the journal that's, that, uh, that we cite, right? Um, the journals that authors from the IJQSC would like to cite. So you can see um, there are a, a, a number of journals that uh, quite uh, have a good affinity, like Clinical Journal of Clinical Nursing, BMC Health Service Research, uh, the uh, World Journal, Bulletin WHO. Okay, Bulletin of WHO, uh, Journal of Advancement in Nursing, BMC Pregnancy, um, etc., and BMJ Quality and Safety. And these are the journal that cited um, us, cited our our papers, uh, including BMC Health Services. Uh, Medical Journal Lancet cited a lot from us. BMJ, uh, uh, I mean British Medical Journal, and also of Internal Medicine. So, so medical care. We are cited by many high impact journals as well. Okay, so the ingredient for your paper will be ideas. This is a slide that would actually borrow from uh, Dr. Professor Jeffrey's talk. Uh, last year. So you need to have these ingredients to make a good paper, uh, like a good cake in this picture. You need ideas, data, theories, team, and target journal. So so if you want to submit a paper to ISQA journal or IJQSC, it's very important that you read our journal and you read the uh, information to the authors. Uh, and also you need to be patience, perseverance, uh, with tenacity and willingness to be rejected, sometimes often. Um, as an author myself, I get rejected very often, so uh, don't be uh, frustrated because it's uh, it's normal that, that that some paper get rejected. Uh, aim high at first, okay? So um, yeah, okay. So before we go to the writing part. Uh, is there any question from the audience that we could answer probably several questions? We don't have questions so far. I'm sure that all of our participants are saving them until the end. Um, okay. So we can continue with the presentation. Okay, the next part will be uh, by uh, Dr. Usman. Uh, Usman, please. So this is a words of wisdom writing. Uh, so you have to plan make a plan before you start writing, where you exactly want to write. So, and you should practice every day uh, writing, and you will make sure that how you can write a good paper. And first of all, you should make a draft and write with your colleagues and print and edit your work. And you should look at yourself 
and you can you know celebrate your success as well once it's get published. Um, questions you, to answer before you start writing: You need to think why you want to publish your work. Is it really new or interesting? Is it a current hot topic? Uh, for example, there are some issues currently happening around the world, so people they would like to work on that and they would like to write something on that. That could be your current hot topic. And uh, have you provided solutions to the, some difficult problems? And are you ready to publish at this point, or you still think that this data is not enough, or that your methodology is not good enough? If you think that your all answers are yes, then you should prepare for your manuscript. So the scientific article must answer the following basic questions. Uh, first of all, like what is the problem that is addressed, why it is important, and what did you study the problem, and how did you study this problem, and what are your results, and what are the implications of the results. So you need to think that your implications of results is not just within the national setting, you should also think about the international comparisons for that, and what do you recommend as further study for others. These are the basic components for all kind of papers. For example, you have to have the title, which should be very clearly describes the contents. It should be very crisp, like you are selling your study to someone, so you need to have a very precise title for that. And you need to ensure the authors, uh, their names as well, of course, and to whom you are including as an authors and how much they contributed. And the abstract, uh, you need to make sure that your abstract limit should be within the limit of the journal as uh, described on the guidelines for authors on the journal website, because sometimes usually we get the uh, abstracts which are so lengthy for 100 words, 500 words, and then the author usually put on the web box for like they just cut the 200 words and uh, put there. That is not really good practice because they need to include the same exact uh, abstract for 250 words in both uh, online system and also in your manuscript. And then you also need to uh, make sure your keywords. Uh, because when somebody is going to search your paper, they have to use the match terms and the keywords. That is very important to identify your work. And also the introduction, it should explain the problem, the basic problem. And then matters, like how you collected the data and how it was analyzed, which methodologies were used, and results, what was discovered. <clears throat> and then you should discuss in the discussion section the implications of your findings too. And of course, there is an acknowledgement section which uh, you can acknowledge the people who funded the research study or the people who help you in drafting, editing, and stuff like that, which you cannot add in the author section. And then there are references. Uh, you need to make sure that it should be compatible with the journal um, style too. Uh, there is always mentioned clearly on the journal website for the author guidelines that which kind of the journal reference style they need. And also, you need to make sure that it should be updated to literature and the relevant one. Uh, sometimes we find that the author, they just usually cite their own papers even if it's not relevant. That is not a good practice, too. And then there is some appendices. If you have some extra figures or tables, you think that it is important, then you should sub, uh, submit as a supplement material. So there are some basic tips to improve an abstract. Uh, the quality of an abstract will strongly influence the decision. Yeah, of let, course. Me, let me add a little bit. Sure. The, um, I generally, the abstract and the title determines about 50% of, of your chance of getting uh, accepted. So it's very, very important that you work on the title as well as the abstract. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, because the editors, they are getting a lot of papers every day, so they don't have enough time to go through the whole paper. Even though your paper is very good, but if your title and abstract is not good, then you have like you know most likely 90% chances you're going to be rejected. So the quality of an abstract will strongly influence the editor's decision, as just Professor Jacqueline mentioned. So a good abstract uh, should be precise and honest, should be crisp, concise and accurate, and should stand alone that if the people they can read the abstract, they should understand the whole study idea. Uh, you should not use the technical jargons. It should be brief and specific, and make sure that you are not citing the references in your abstract. So you should make the abstract like you're selling your article, your study. So and there is a tips to improve your introduction section. 
uh, you should consult the guidelines for authors for word limit. That is very important because sometimes some articles, if you're writing perspective, we only have limited for 1,500 to 2,000 words. And if you're writing the research article, then you can write from 2,000 to 3,000 words. If you're writing a review article, then there is a different limit because the review article, you have to write a little bit more. So you have to make sure the word limit and then you should set the scene that what is exactly the problem and how, what you are going to do and outline the problem and hypothesis clearly and ensure that your literature cited is balanced. Uh, make sure that you're not oversighted and not even less cited means you should balance your literature and it should be updated to literature and relevant. And define any non-standard abbreviations if you're using and jargons. And then there is a background section. Uh, you should state clearly your research question, which is very important uh, for reviewers, editors, and everyone to understand and why it is important and the hypothesis which you are tested by your study. Uh, then there are some methods components. Uh, you have to have the overview at beginning and standard uh, sequence of methods, for example, like your study design, your patient description interventions, which you are going to have in your study, some instruments if you have developed and definitions of your primary endpoints, secondary endpoints, data collection, and statistic analysis software you use. And make sure you have the ethics, informed consent, or IRB mentioned in your methodology section at the end, too. Then there are some tips to improve results section. You can include results only. Uh, make sure you're not writing, again, the methods or the introduction things, just only focusing on the results. And you should focus on the some statistic numbers to show in your results section. And try to compare with like and like. And try to have some schematic a pictorial diagram of your study. Highlight only the most important numbers in the text. Make sure you are not writing to all the numbers. Because sometimes when you are analyzing uh, the data, you are getting a lot of numbers. So try to pick only the important numbers which you think that this is really relevant. And try to use more uh, tables and figures to the data instead of writing the descriptive numbers information. Then there are some tips to improve discussion section. The discussion section should be comprised uh, of six to seven paragraphs. Uh, the results relate to the study and aims and hypotheses. You should have some international studies. You can relate how your results and hypotheses are similar or different than the other studies and what could be the limitations of your study. And some theoretical implications and possible practical implications and all those interpretations of your findings, limitations of your studies. And you can also mention about the future direction uh, for your research and of course summary and conclusion, which is very important and what you have finally got from the whole study. So there are some overall tips to improve a research paper. Uh, for example, pose an original research question, test at least one hypothesis, but not so many, sometimes uh, if you are having so many hypotheses, then you are confused at where you are going to focus in your paper. So because your paper have the limit of the words, uh, 2,000 to 2,500 words or 3,000 words, so you cannot write so many uh, results or hypothesis results in the paper. So make sure you are testing one or two hypotheses and trying to answer that. And make sure the table and figures should convey the key findings without the text. Uh, know and cite prior literature, updated literature, and shorter is better. As I mentioned, the word count is very important, so try to make as short as you can and with more information. So uh, while you're writing your paper, you need to know your enemy. <clears throat> For example, good writing avoids the following traps. Repetition, you should avoid the repetition, you should avoid the redundancy, uh, ambiguity, and exhaustion. These are the common analysis for editors and reviewers, of course, when they are reading and if they found that there is a repetition or dancing and there is ambiguity there, so they would not be happy to read further for your paper. It's kind of annoying for them. Uh, there is one more important thing which usually authors forget about the cover letter because it is also very important. The editor, when they receive the paper, they also have the cover letter. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, submit and uh, Word version or any file with a cover letter, or sometimes uh, there's a box on the online web, so you can just write there directly. But make sure you should write clearly a cover letter with the following components. For example, you need to mention about the editor's name if you knew editor already, or just trying to address because uh, it will show that you are, you know, interacting the particular editor. Sometimes we got some papers, the authors they are submitting to the some other journal, and then just on the same paper and without changing 
if they are submitting on a journal and just submitting to the IGPSC without changing even the editor's name or journal's name. That is not a good practice as well. So the first sentence, provide the title, author list, and journal name. Uh, give the background to the research, like what was done, what was found, and just in two or three lines is enough. And then significance of your research in one or two lines is also enough. And interest to the journal readers that why it is important to the journal readers, why you are submitting to this particular journal. So you have to make sure. So this two to three lines will not take too much uh, worse. And then you should confirm the originality of your submission as well uh, in the submission, in the cover letter, and confirm that there are no competing financial interests as well. And Make sure your correspondence address is correct because the editor, if they have to have some correspondence with the authors, they will uh, communicate with them. So what leads you to acceptance? Attention to the details, check and double check your work, consider the reviews, and you need to make sure your language is okay, correct, and presentation is important. As I mentioned, that you, your paper is, the presentation is very important, it should be very precise, and follow the journal guidelines, and take your time with the revision. If you get the revision, it means that there is a good news that we are giving an other opportunity to the authors that they can uh, address the reviewer comments and they can improve their paper and they have high chances to get acceptance. So when you're receiving the revision, then you should try to work hard to address comments appropriately. Most of the times, the uh, uh, authors, they are not addressing comments of the reviewers point by point. So you need to make sure you are addressing comments point by point, plus you're also changing in the main manuscript, the final version. Uh, you can use the track changes as well, or you can just um, you know highlight the changes. And acknowledge those who helped you, a new and original previously unpublished paper, and critically evaluate your own manuscript, and you should have the ethical rules must be obeyed as well. So this will lead you to accept your paper. And after acceptance, not just finish there, because you also have to promote your work and why it is important to promote your work. Of course, because you want to you know, let other people or your peers know that what you have done, so they are not doing the similar things. Uh, plus, it will also help to support educators, trainers globally, and it will also help you to raise your profile, and it could also help to attract collaborators and funding more if you're working in any research center or in an academic institution. And it will also help you to create more new opportunities in consulting or the media. So how you can promote your paper? Uh, you can use some social media channels, which are very common nowadays, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and etc. And you can use your network through a list of uh, emails and press releases or simply link to the case in your email signatures or you can contact to the authors in your reference list and of course you can own your media skills and brand image and ask the publisher to provide you with the leaflets as well or you can go to the conferences and present your work there too. Uh, one more important thing I would like to mention here that uh, we are going to have a star conference in London in 2017 and Professor Jack Lee and some other deputy editors, uh, we are going to have a journal session there. Uh, I just mentioned here uh, it's 12.30 to 1.30 on 3rd October, Tuesday at B10 session. So you are all encouraged to join there if you are coming to London. Thank you. So we are open for the questions. Thank you, Professor Jekyll, and thank you, um, Dr. Usman Iqbal, for this fantastic presentation. Uh, just to remind the participants that if you would like to post the questions, please type them in into the chat or question box provided or raise your hand. Um, we don't have many questions so far, but we will start with the couple that we have. So the, um, the question is uh, from Sarah Condal, and she's asking, how many reviews are there per submitted paper, and do authors have a right to reply to reviewer comments? How many? Usually we have, uh, the minimum standard is like we need to record have two reviewers at least for paper, but if we have even one reviewer, good reviewer, that would be enough. So editor usually evaluate the reviewers. Uh, for instance, if there is uh, the comments for the reviewers, of course, the authors, they have to address those comments appropriately, point by point, and also have to make changes in their final version. That is very important. And if they're not going to do that, then there is no guarantee that their paper is going to. But of course, the, uh, the assumption is that you get a chance to revise. 
um, if if we have enough reviewers and auto reviewers decided that we should reject the paper, then sometimes you get a rejection without the chance of, of explaining yourself. So uh, that's why we want you to make sure that when you submit a paper, make sure that it's uh, well prepared uh, and not not take your chance by you know submitting a semi-finish or unfinished work in order to at least get a chance of revision because during the revision process sometimes we have first revision second revision or even third revision I mean during the revision process you get a chance to explain yourself and respond specifically to each comments from the reviewers right thank you Jack Lee and thank you Usman um, it just, I suppose, the second part of Sarah's question was, does a submitter uh, have a right to reply to review a comments directly? Uh, does this mean it depends. It depends. Um, again, if it's not, if it's decided that the paper should be rejected at this point of time, then there would be no chance for the author to to even. Uh, I mean, they can see the reverse comment, but they would not have a chance to respond to it. Yes, that, that's typically how a journal is, uh, is run, because there are just so many, you know, rejected papers. You, you can only respond to a reverse comment when, when you're in the revision mode. Is that, uh, does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Uh, the next question is from Adarami. It's a similar question again. If research is rejected, can it be resubmitted? Uh, no, usually we don't because we try to re reevaluate after your comments. So even we are uh, willing to take the paper back, the reviewer will not be happy to reassess the paper again. But, but again, if this rejected paper is, re is, re is rewritten significantly, with a uh, you know much improved format and content and even revised title, there is still a chance that you can submit your work. Um, but of course, we do not accept resubmission of the original manuscript that was already rejected. Uh, so, um, so specifically, if you want to, if you're thinking of resubmitting a rejected paper you need to be confident that it's significantly different from the original, originally rejected manuscript. There's another question. You can Thank so you. When... Yeah, um, the question is from Marianne Street, and uh, the question is as follows. It can be so frustrating when an article is rejected by a high-quality journal without being sent out for review and no feedback. Can you please comment on how to select the best and most appropriate journal for your manuscript. Uh, okay, that's actually a little. The question is a little backward because, um, as we just go through in the seminar, you know, before you start writing your manuscript, you pick your journal, you pick your target journal, not after. You know, if you write your manuscript and then you start to pick your journal it will be a much more difficult job than if you aim to a specific journal to begin with before you actually start to write. Um, so, and, and actually my personal experience tell, tells me if you get rejected by a high quality journal, you usually learn something from it. Uh, usually, I mean, at, at least you get desktop reject, meaning um, not, as describing a question, not being sent to the reviewer and, and then rejected, then there will be something wrong in the manuscript itself that does not attract the editorial's team to send it to the reviewers. So then you will, will have to revise your manuscript significantly before considering submitting, submitting it to a, a next journal. Um, but if it's been through the reviewers, you, usually you get very constructive comments, and that would help you in the next submission to a different journal. 
Thank you both. Uh, the next question is, how is editor's choice paper selected? What is the criteria? Okay. Um, as I described, we have seven uh, deputy editors around the world. So we will have a, a vote um, every, every time before we finalize an issue of all the accepted papers. And then um, the editor-in-chief would be the final person to make the final decision about which uh, two papers. Yeah. Now we select two papers out of each issue as editor's choice. Um, generally, we measure the papers on novelty and the, um, the attraction to general audience uh, and also on the veracity or the uh, tenacity of the study method, the rigor of the scientific methods. Thank you. The next question is, uh, can you publish the same paper in two different journals? Oh, no, you can't. It's considered very uh, unethical to duplicate submission, meaning submit one paper. A a actually, it's already quite unethical to submit a manuscript to multiple journals at the same time or, or in overlapping time frame. Uh, not to mention that if you get published in two different journals, um, usually you will have to retract at least one of them. And usually when journal, when the publisher find out or when the editorial team find out, uh, then this is very bad for the author's credit because it's considered very unethical to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, it seems that we uh we have another question from Shishir. Um, let me just read it. It only came through uh, just now. Many times there are no clear guidelines uh, given to the authors. And once paper is submitted, then it is reverted with comments and instructions to follow a particular, uh, particular reference style. Um, so what would you recommend to do in this situation? Uh, usually in the very first attempt, we don't uh, reject that paper if the paper is good, only because of the reference style. But when we send for revision, then we ask authors in the editorial comments that they should follow this one. And we send the guidelines as well for that. So only based on the reference style, we don't reject fast uh, for the good paper, good quality paper. Yeah, however, you should really read. Um, in every journal's website, there is a section called to the authors or for the authors. Um, usually within this, this, this typical information package, you're going to learn what is the correct or the uh, recommended reference type. Uh, so there is not much, you know, there's a, there are actually not many different styles that journals would accept. So, so just read the package carefully before you uh, actually submit. Right. And we have very clear guidelines mentioned on our journal website. Uh, from abstract title and everything. Right. Check your format before submit. Thank you so much. Uh, the last question for today, well, uh, so far, um, how does the journal ranking work? Ranking of the journal. The journal ranking, um, well, it's, it's actually not, of course, it's by a company uh, called JCR, Journal Citation Research, um, and Impact factor or, or the uh, citation impact factor is actually just one of the indicators. But again, uh, it's almost like a universal standard for all the countries in the world that we look at journal impact factors. Uh, the impact factor is actually a ratio between two numbers. The denominator is the number of papers published by this journal in the past two years. Uh, no, in the, in the past one year? Two years. Two years. And the numerator is the number of papers, the times of paper being cited within this published time frame. Uh, so two means that in average, each paper gets cited twice uh, in the past two years of all the papers that you published. So say if you published 200 papers in the past two years, and it's got cited 400 times, these 200 papers got cited 400 times, then you have an impact factor of two. And then they rank each in uh, according to the field. 
For example, IJQSC belongs to health services research. Yeah. Uh, so and it's ranked as uh, I don't know, I don't know, 40, yeah, top 30, 20, yeah. One, top, yeah, top 10 yeah. journal or top 20 journal. In top 30s. Yeah. The uh, it, the ranking is actually based on impact factor. Okay. And impact factor is also called two year impact factor. There's another indicator called five year impact factor. Uh, the, the basic principles are the same, except that the time frame extend, was extended to five years. Thank you. Um, the next question is from Fushan On. It's a twist on the question that has been uh, asked uh, already. Uh, is it possible to publish paper that has been submitted to a national or local journal uh, to international journal then for the benefit of more readers? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Actually, um, a lot of authors who publish their original finding or, or their pilot preliminary finding in a conference proceeding. And then when they want to submit this paper that's published in a proceeding, uh, in, in, in this example, a local journal or other, other type of publications, they want to submit to a, a journal for, for, uh, for another uh, a second time publication. In that special case, what you could do is you get the permission from the previous proceeding or local journal or, or publication type, you get permission from them and then you disclose to the next journal you're going to submit that this has been published in, in which proceeding or which local journal and see if the next journal would like to accept this as a, like a secondary publication. Uh, usually the next journal would not accept and this, this and this, this is really like a very, very important discovery that has to be republished in, in, in this, the next journal. Uh, the chance that it gets re accepted is, is low, but it's not impossible. And, and we've seen examples like that, uh, you know. So, but the, you have to get, first, you have to get permission from the previous publication, the publisher. And then second, you have to disclose specifically when you submit to the next journal, where and when this is published. Thank you, Jack Lee. Um, the next question is from Shishir uh, again, and he's asking, is it necessary to publish paper in the journals with impact factor more than three to have the credil credibility of the paper? What are your views? <laughs> there is no absolute standards for uh, impact factor, what's a good impact factor, what's a bad impact factor. Actually, impact factors, if we look at the numbers in a isolated form, you know, without any background, the numbers doesn't mean anything. Um, usually, the ranking, the percentile, or the order of the journal in its own field is more important, it's a much more useful uh, indicator for the importance of the journal. For example, if, if your journal is in a field that has only 20 journal, uh, then you know the first five journal may be uh, the, the most important journal that, that you want to publish. If they're in a category of like 200 journals, then maybe the top 20, top 30, top 40 journals are all very good. So it's really not about the absolute impact factor. It's more impact factor as its uh, inventor Eugene, Dr. Eugene indicated it's not to be compared across different domains. So a impact factor five journal in biochemistry cannot be seen as, uh, you know, cannot be compared to another computer science journal with an impact factor of three. Five is not necessarily higher than three in this case because they are not to be used in a cross domain comparison uh, situation. Thank you so much. Uh, we have no further questions. So on behalf of ESQA, I would like to thank you both for um, this fantastic presentation, exceptionally informative. And I have absolutely no doubts that you will uh, receive a significant increase of great quality papers uh, in, a, uh, in the next couple of months. So thank you again. And we are looking forward to seeing you all uh, attendees at the conference session as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.